Okay. Uh, my uh, topic for tonight is computer software that will simulate the behavior of an electronic circuit. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, a couple reasons. Um, if you want to learn more about electronic circuits, there's really no substitute for hooking some things together and being able to change the component values and see what happens and so on. Now, it's really great if you have an opportunity to do that in the real world, um, but you have all the barriers of cost and time and access to appropriate test equipment and so on. So a very valuable uh, second choice is to do it in the virtual world using computer software, which I'll show you tonight. Now, if you're actually planning to build something uh, that you're going to keep, the simulation is still valuable. It's good for checking your design and making sure that uh, the simulation doesn't reveal any design flaws. And there are cases where you don't know exactly what's the best value for s some of the components you know, in your uh, circuit, and you want to play around with it, and it's also uh, good to do that in simulation. Let's see, let me flip the light switch real quick. I think that'll help too. Good. Okay, so the package that I'm going to demonstrate tonight is called QUCS for Quite Universal Circuit Simulator, and it really does do a lot of different things. Uh, it is open source, com completely free. You can download it. Runs on Windows, runs on Mac, runs on Linux. Um, and it has a low enough learning curve that after I'm done tonight, you'll be substantially up it for uh, many of the things that the parents <coughs> want to do. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, start by, well, actually, first disclaimer, it's a simulation. So when you build the circuit, it may or may not uh, do something very close to the simulation. Okay, why is that? Well, lots and lots of things can go wrong in the real world. You know, every piece of wire has a little bit of resistance, a little bit of capacitance, a little bit of inductance, can act a little bit like an antenna. None of that kind of behavior is captured in a simulation model like this. And there are a number of other considerations that uh, mean there's a lot more to the art of electrical engineering than just drawing a schematic diagram. On the other hand, um, if you're, you're careful and uh, know some of the basic rules, uh, you can get very, very good results uh, from a simulation. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead. I'm going to um, just start from where you would be if you just loaded the software. You download it. Uh, the download site is in the meeting announcement. It's also on the website. And by the way, this, uh, this software package is actually cobbled together from a number of open source modules. So when you load it, it's going to load thing after thing after thing, and you might wonder, my gosh, what's it doing? Well, it's loading all the pieces uh, that then have a graphical user interface cobbled onto the top. Okay, so don't be disturbed when uh, more than one thing starts to load onto your uh, computer. Okay, now I have the magnifier on in Windows. That's going to help you see the screen, but it also means the screen is going to move around in funny ways. So that's, that's what's going on. Okay, so uh, let me go to um, uh, a new project. And this is where you're going to be when when the uh, thing starts up. I believe it will start a new project for you, but uh, you know, I'll just give it a name. It can be any name. And at this point, all that create has done is created a directory on your computer to save the stuff that you're going to build. So to get the thing going, what you have to do is draw a schematic diagram of the circuit that you want to simulate. Okay, and to do that, you will need some components. 
So let me talk a little bit about the available components that you can add to schematics. Um, lumped components are things like resistors, capacitors, inductors, um, and several other things, most of which you uh, won't care about at first. Okay, and tonight I'm just going to use some resistors and capacitors. Now there's a pull down here, and you're going to need some of the things on the pull down, so let me talk a little bit about that. Uh, sources here's a DC voltage source, so a battery, power supply, or whatever would be simulated um, with that. Now there are also current sources. Uh, you can go to Walmart and you can buy a voltage source, right? Uh, I haven't seen a current source uh, on the Walmart shelves, but the reason it's there is that for some things like certain transistor circuits, they're current amplifiers. So it's just there to make it easy for you to get the operating condition you need uh, to analyze without going through uh, a lot of work. So it's a convenient modeling tool. It doesn't really you know, exist that way in, in the real world. Um, Although I do have lab power supplies with const constant current output. Right, right. So yes, lab tools, yes. But not Walmart shelves. <laughs> OK. Um, so we're going to play with some DC voltages and some AC voltage sources uh, later on tonight. Um, I'll mention probes quickly. Um, I will show you shortcut ways of measuring voltage if you want to measure voltages other than with respect to ground or if you want to put a current um, monitor in your uh, diagram, you can do it here. Um, Nonlinear components would be where you find your diodes and transistors and um, let's see, I'll just um, mention also that there's an op-amp component that you can use uh, when you get to the extra class exam materials, at least in my year, you found op-amps, so those are available to play with. Um, digital components, again, you won't uh, probably see these unless you get into digital electronics through some other route or get to the ex amateur extra uh, level of licensing, but they are there and you can do digital simulations. I'll show you uh, one later. And then finally, uh, you must use these simulation uh, uh, <clears throat> components and add those to your um, diagram to tell the computer what kind of thing you want to do. So we'll see that. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll do a simulation. So I'm going to go up to lumped components. Or actually, let me let me start with the source. Now uh, there are two choices: you can drag and drop the source, you know, onto your schematic or you can uh, click it, click the mouse, and then it gives you uh, the opportunity to place the component. And then to get out of this mode, um, you can either click on the arrow or you can hit the escape key and you're ready to do something else. And by the way, you have to notice that uh, this screen does have different modes, and if you're trying to get something to happen and it's not happening, probably you need to go over and click this arrow and get back into the correct mode. Okay, well I've got uh, my voltage source, so uh, let me go to lump components, and so I'm going to select the US symbol for resistor. Now, when you're in this state here, um, if you do a right click on the mouse, it'll rotate at 90 degrees. So that's, uh, that's why I like to go over and click first and then uh, bring the components over. So I'm gonna do uh, one of the world's simplest circuits, a voltage divider, two resistors. 
And now I've got all the components uh, that I need. So I'm ready to wire everything together, all right? My wire is over here. So I'm gonna click on the wire icon and I want to join uh, these components by placing the mouse at the various, what they call ports, they're the little red circles, and just clicking. So here we go. I'll click there and there, here and here. Now for this wire, I'm gonna click here. I need to make the turn, so I'm gonna uh, click where I wanna make the turn. And there we go. Okay, now I've almost got my um, diagram done. There's a couple of more things that I have to do. Uh, the uh, simulation will give you voltages with respect to ground. You need to tell it where ground is or it's going to guess and you may be dissatisfied with what it guesses. <laughs> All right. So, let me come up here and grab ground. And I would like ground right there. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, just about ready to go. But uh, there's one more thing I need to do. Uh, the shortcut way to say where you want a voltage measurement uh, to be taken is to label the wire uh, where the voltage appears. So I'm going to, um, let's see, I think I can double click on this wire. There we go. And I'll give it a name. Let's see. Um, what, um, what was I going to call it? I was going to call it divided. Oops. Okay. Now the fact that I've given it a name means that it, when it runs simulations, it's going to compute voltages at that point and offer them for display. Okay, so that was the purpose of, of naming the wire. I could also have put a voltage probe um, and connected it uh, across uh, R2 and ground and that would have been equivalent or I could have put a voltage probe across R1 if I wanted to do that. Okay. Now at this point, you would say, well, gee, I have everything I need. I could run a simulation, right? And this here um, tries to run simulations, but it says, well, gee, you haven't um, given this a name yet, so uh, I don't know what to do. So I'm going to I'm going to save um, this, and I'll just call it BDIV. And one more thing, I have to tell it what kind of simulation to do. Okay. And for this circuit, it's going to be something called a DC simulation. It's just going to do DC kinds of computations. And in this case, it won't need anything more than Ohm's law. All right, so I'll put my DC simulation on there. And let's see, I guess I should save now, again. And now I should be ready to run the simulation. And it popped up a screen, and by golly, that was a successful simulation. But you don't see anything, right? Okay. And that's because there's one more thing you have to add, which is a diagram. So now what it wants is for me to tell it uh, what it wants me to, what I want it to do with the output. All right. So, oops, let me go back here. Now, you have a choice. You can put the output on a separate page, which is what, what it has set me up to do here. Or for simple circuits, you can actually put the output on the same page with the schematic. 
which is what I'm going to do because it's going to be easier to play with this uh, and I have plenty of room to do that. So I'm just going to take a tabular because actually we only have one value, all right, and um, you see it, it's offering the voltage at V1, well, that's a one volt source, so that isn't very interesting, and it's offering the uh, voltage at the part of the wire I call divided, so divided dot V is its name for the voltage on that wire. So I'm going to double click that and say OK. And there we go. Successful simulation. That's all it takes. Yeah? The, the resulting graph, when you name that bar, you actually turn in the point on the bar that is simulated. Well, remember, the simulated wire has no length, no resistance, so it doesn't matter where on the wire you take the measurement. Um, okay, so now that's, that's kind of fun, but that's not really very interesting. Let's change one of the resistors and see what happens. So I can uh, go up and double click one of these, one of these guys. I want to get in this mode first. Okay. And He's set to 50 ohms. Let's make him be 25. Oops. How did that happen? That's the temperature you're on. Oh, thank you. All right, so let's... Thank you. All right, so now we're good. So now we've got 25 ohms there, and so we would expect... Um, one third of the voltage to drop across here and two thirds to drop across here. And we'll just run that simulation. Now you notice it uh, switched to a display page. Okay, and my answer's it here because I elected to keep it there. What I want to do, and this isn't very obvious in the manual, is if I right click out here in a blank space and uh, click document settings and uncheck this box, then it won't shift pages on me when I move, um, uh, when I do the simulation. Okay. So, and, uh, oops, let's let go here. All right, and, um, I mean, you can make it zero if you want. Yep, there it is. Okay. What if you make both resistors zero? Uh, if you make both resistors zero, then I'm sure you generate some kind of error. <laughs> and heat. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there's no fuse in that. Well, uh, you can give that a try if you like on your own. I'm sure it'll generate an error. And unfortunately, um, I said this is free software. Well, the upside is what I just said. The downside is that the documentation and the error messages are not as spiffy as they would probably be in something that uh, you paid a lot of money for. So uh, you, um, you know, may need to look carefully when you get an error message to untangle it. Uh, one of the things is that it's very fussy uh, about uh, values. If you want, uh, uh, 10 meg ohms, it has to be 10 capital M, not something else. So um, that's one of the errors that I had. And also, if you forget to put a simulation block on, you know, you, that'll gen obviously generate an error. Okay, now what I'd like to do next is show you some variants of, of simulations. From now on, I'm not going to draw the diagram again because you've seen how to do that. I just want to talk about. Um, what other kinds of simulations there are and how they work. And the first one is going to be a build on this one. 
Yeah, I've been playing with R1. Um, and as you can see, if R1 is zero, you know, we get a voltage of one. Uh, what if uh, R1 was 25 mega ohms? You know, what do you think the graph would look like then? Well, if R1 is huge and R2 is tiny, almost all of that one voltage, vol voltage will drop against across R1, right? Okay, so you could run this simulation over and over again and do that by hand, but there's an easier way. So let me show you that. So I'm going to go back up to my projects and open up this one. Uh, yeah, you can, let's see, um, you can save my work and this, let me, this uh, magnifier makes it a little awkward. Okay. Um, but you can actually have two simulation blocks on a schematic. And what I've done here is change it so that what was R1, uh, of that, which had a value, now the, the resistance is Rx, a variable. Okay? And what I'm going to do is sweep that variable over a range and then plot a graph of the output. Okay, so that's a DC simulation with a parameter sweep. And you can put parameter sweeps on any kind of simulation, most kinds of simulations, not digital as far as I know. Um, and actually you can have multiple parameter sweeps and then it'll do all, all combinations. So all I did uh, was go into um, resistor R1 and You see now the resistance in ohms is Rx, a variable name. So I made that change. And then I added this parameter sweep. And you can see that the uh, simulation it goes with is DC1, the DC simulation. The sweep parameter is Rx. The type is linear. My other choice was logarithmic. And I gave it a range of, say, 0 to 500 ohms. And at the bottom, you can either tell it what is a step interval, or you can put in a number of, of different resistances, or the number of different values you want to compute over that interval. And it will uh, perform accordingly. OK, everybody good so far? I right. wish we would have had this in school. <laughs> it's great for school. Yeah, I wish we would have had it in school. Yeah, I had a well, graphite board. Um, actually, simulation goes back to uh, 1970 era. Um, and the original simulators required you to number the nodes and then punch the uh, components values on punch cards and submit the deck and run in batch and and so on. You get your three sheets back that said they bombed. Right, <laughs> right. And uh, <laughs> under, actually underneath this, there is a program like that. And you can actually see that file. It does create a file, you know, with all the nodes and so on. But it does it from the schematic automatically, which is much friendlier. Okay, so. Well, that's all I had to do for this guy, and you know, by golly, it really does work. All right, let me, uh, and well, of course, this was another one of the diagrams, so now we have the Cartesian diagram rather than the tabular. Okay, let's see. Um, 
Now I'm going to show you a couple of alternating current simulation pipes. And I don't like the way they named these, so uh, let me talk about them and uh, help you understand uh, what they are. So the circuit we're going to look at here is the world's simplest high-pass filter, the capacitor. Right? And uh, we've got a resistive load, we've got a line labeled. Um, let's see, here is the source. Okay, and let's see, I don't, actually I don't remember exactly how all of the voltage, AC voltage sources work, but I was able to get square waves and sawtooth waves and so on by manipulating uh, the various AC sources and these other parameters. And I did an AC simulation. Okay, well, what they're really saying with AC simulation is it's going to be a frequency domain simulation. That mm -hmm. is, that we're going to have frequency on the horizontal axis. That's their definition of an AC simulation. Now, there are lots of other things you might want to do with an AC circuit, okay? But if you pick AC simulation, this is what you're going to get. Yeah, I mean, you, you would use this simulation All frequency to depend, yeah. do things like frequency response of an audio amplifier or uh, the uh, performance characteristics of an RF filter. Well, I, I agree with you in the like sense that. that the name is seems a little strange. Yeah, okay. So that's the AC simulation. With, with the output, I assume that you can change the parameters on that and have that be a, a log, uh, logarithm. Yes, like yes. Yeah, you can change um, same. Yeah, you have the same kind of, um, right. of parameters. You go to the properties and you know make things logarithmic by going to this properties tab. Okay, so what's changing is the frequency. Okay, and the thing that's making it change is the parameters in the in the simulation block. Okay, so you you've got the frequency back to the source now. And actually, um, that I think this guy, the source. Uh, this actually specified a frequency, but the simulation block overrode it. So it doesn't work exactly the same way as that resistance sweep did. I don't know why, that's just the way they did it. But it shows very clearly how RF passes through a capacitor. Yep. That's a filter. Yeah, it's, a filter. it's the world's simplest high-pass filter. Exactly. And you see that used all the time in circuits where, you know, somebody has a, a waveform uh, and the DC bias and they don't want the DC bias to get passed to the next stage and so on. Yeah. Is it possible to run Yes, yes, and there's a three-dimensional graph that can be used to display that if you like. That was, I think, that what you brought up before. Oh, I'm off. And you and you can have multiple sweeps within a simulation. One of the parameters for the graph was steps. Yes, that, well, that's actually a parameter of the simulation. So this says I'm going to compute uh, 10,000 points between the low frequency and the high frequency. Yeah, and you can... Uh, 
you know, if you have well, if you have something that's that's oscillating and you only pick three points and there's a thousand cycles, you probably won't get a very representative <laughs> view of what's going on. Yes. Yeah. No, I have not seen um, that as a separate feature. Obviously, you could sweep the parameters on the components. Um, but, but then it's going to rigorously compute all the combinations, and you're going to have to wait for that. So no, I don't think there's a, a Monte Carlo simulation. By that, we mean um, with a random number generator, pick values within a range and try to get a rep enough for a representative sample. No, it's going to do, as far as I know, the only option is to do all the, the combinations. Yeah? Is it, is it possible for the United States, if you look at the RMS local check, for example, and could you actually look at kind of a sweep? Could you actually get the both of them at a time? Yeah, that's, that's coming next. Okay. <clears throat> okay, anything else on this one? All right, well, as we've just heard, this isn't the only thing you'd want to do with an AC circuit, right? So um, let's take a look at this other cut. So it's the same circuit. I think I changed the values a little bit, but uh, the uh, components are the same. But now uh, you see time on the horizontal axis. And that's what they call a transient simulation. So the difference between transient and AC is what's on the horizontal axis. Mm -hmm. And again, um, you know, you may or may not be interested in transient behavior. Um, in this particular example, there is some because everybody's got to start at zero at time zero, right? So um, the A uh, blue line is here, the red line is the voltage here. They're going to be out of phase because of that capacitor. And you can see that at time zero, they both have to start at zero because there hasn't been any voltage applied anywhere. After that, uh, you never see them crossing um, zero at the same time. So there is a little bit of transient behavior here, but it would have been nicer, I think, if they called them time domain and frequency domain simulations. Let's see, anything here? Again, the parameters. Um, <coughs> I uh, simulated from zero to two microseconds and took a thousand points. Now somebody pointed out that when you've got oscillations, if you take a really small number of points, like three, uh, you can um, run that and you won't get something that looks very much like the actual um, behavior, so you must be careful when you select the number of points. You know, maybe uh, try it with uh, a few more and see what happens. You can get very strange effects if you uh, don't, uh, if you don't sample at a small enough interval. Let's see, let's, let's do 2,000. that and that looks just the same as 1,000. Okay, let's see, how are we doing for time? Not bad. Um, okay, anything on the transient simulation? The silence is deafening. <laughs> All right. It's also possible <laughs> well, we're all just <laughs> <laughs> if 
but wait, wait until the final exam. You guys, you guys are ready for that, right? All right, well, so you guys won't see this until you're ready for amateur extra, but this is a digital logic circuit. Okay? In digital logic circuits, the inputs are one of two voltages representing one and zero. All right? And you have a set of operations. Um, these symbols are actually um, non-standard symbols, so they don't look like the ones we're used to. This, this is an AND gate, and that looks pretty much like what we're used to seeing for an AND gate. Uh, this is an OR, and uh, this is a NOT, so this is an encoder. So for the inverter, if a 1 goes in, a 0 comes out, and vice versa. For the AND, if both of the inputs are one, then the output is one. Otherwise, the output is zero. And nor is the other way around. If either input is a one, then the output is a one. You know, otherwise it's zero. And there are there are other kinds of gates too. You know, NAND and NOR and exclusive OR and so on. They're all similar kinds of operations. Okay. So when you're designing a digital circuit, you have a certain number of inputs going in, and you have some number, typically different, coming out. And what you want to make sure is that you, all the outputs are what you want uh, for the various inputs. And that's what a digital simulation will do. And this. I did the uh, Great Courses course in electronics. This is one of the homework problems from that. And uh, there are four bits into this digital simulation that represent a single decimal number. Um, and the output of the circuit is one if and only if the input number is two, six, or eight. All right. And it turns out his claim is that that's one of the things you need to uh, uh, drive a seven seg segment numerical display. I don't know what happened before, but that's what he said in the problem. So, anyway, this is also a great example of something you wouldn't really do this way because if you wanted to solve that problem in the real world, you'd go to mouser.com or some other part supplier and you would find the integrated circuit that does that and you would buy it and that would be the end of the story. But, uh, for a student learning how digital logic stuff works, it's a great, you know, um, homework problem. Now, back, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole here, but in this case here, the straight digital, this is, this is assuming there's no propagation <coughs> way through any of these here. You can see right. cases here where your output, you change S2, you're going to get glitches on the output depending on the propagation time and, and the state through that. Does this handle that? No, this simulation doesn't worry about that. You know, all the transitions are instantaneous and so on. I think this is what we if I remember the right term was Cornell map. Um, map. Basically. Well, that's what you have there. What I have here is uh, is the truth table that says what is the output for every input. Yeah. So, and that was one of the diagrams. And these guys are the inputs that support that diagram. So for a digital circuit, you have a different uh, source you know, that you use just for digital. How come they're named S2, 3, 4, and 5? Is that just what it is? Source, S2? Um, yeah, good question. Um, Probably, uh, probably what that means. Well, the um, these are the numbers that are actually used in the truth table. So this is good. num equals one puts it in the first column and two in the second and so on. This s s two three four and five probably means that when I drew it, the, the circuit, I had a one at one point and took it off and moved things around. Nothing more than that. It's insignificant. You could change it if you wanted to. Okay, now, um, next meeting we're going to learn about Smith charts. Oh. And in this program, there are Smith chart things. I saw. So, uh, 
a challenge that any of us who want to can take on for our next our next meeting is to do something that results in a Smith chart that's meaningful. Yeah, Lee. When you download the software, you get some other things beyond this as well, right? Like you the HDL simulator, the Verilog. Yes, you get several modules. Which go much beyond this. Yes. This is four or five lessons. I'm just, I'm just saying, if nobody goes off and tries to download this program, don't be surprised. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. Yeah, but, when but, you load it, you're going to get lots of modules because it has many capabilities and it's cobbled together from a lot of different open source programs. Well, VHDL is, is the language for describe, design, designing, describing visual logic for like programmable logic arrays and cases, you know. So it's a little bit more beyond just the quirks, I think, right? This is kind of just one sub part of it. The whole package. Well, the package has a lot of capabilities, yeah. as you mentioned, and it also uh, interoperates um, with things in languages besides the schematic that right. we're drawing here. Yeah, I think just it's the way I think I would describe it. The other thing was the like, like Keras or something, like Carsos, <coughs> Pure Cult. No, there, there's another. You download it, you'll see another program show, showing up called yes, there like was, Keras or something. Yes, and it will do things like solve differential equations. equations and all kinds of other um, mathematical things. Ooh, how many variables? So don't, don't be surprised when you download the program that you start seeing all this other stuff showing up that's, that's not even related to the circuit analysis. It's more and, and your memory goes down. Engineering stuff. Question for you, Um. What? Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have to draw the circuit in itself, or was it the circuit? I viewed the circuit. Yeah. So each one of those was. And then the output was the truth table. Yes. So the, that truth table uh, is one of the uh, you know possible output diagrams. Okay. What else can I tell you?